So today we'll be going over what's called plane stress transformations and that's exactly what we're going to be doing which is transforming the stresses developed in an object. Mainly the orientation of the stresses that we're, that the object may be experiencing. So let me go ahead and draw an object that is experiencing some sort of loading. So let's say we have this rod or a beam and it's experiencing some kind of external loads. Now what we do is we look at an element, a small finite element within this object experiencing the external loads and then we go ahead and analyze that small element. So here is the coordinate system that I'll be using in three dimensions and here I'm going to go ahead and draw this element with 3D coordinate system. So here is this 3D finite element that I just drew. Now what's left are the stress components, right? We have the normal stress components on each of these faces of this cube as well as the shear stresses. So let me go ahead and draw that out. So here are the normal stresses at each of the planes. Keep in mind the other faces as well, they also have um, normal stress components, just that I don't want to clutter up this image here. So I'm just drawing what's um, currently visible. So we have the stress along the X direction, stress along the Y, as well as the Z. Now I can't forget the shear stresses as well. So for this front face, we have the shear stress over here going across, right? So this is the shear stress. Now one thing to note is a naming convention here. Since the shear stress is on this plane, it's pointing towards the direction of the X coordinate. So this will be the last variable here. And this front face is perpendicular to the Z axis. So this will actually be named as tau z x because the the face the plane or the face of this is perpendicular to the z axis right and the shear stress is pointing towards or in the direction of the x coordinate so tau z x and we have the same one on the opposite end of the face equal and opposite and on this one it's going this direction tau x z is the naming convention and we also have a shear stress going along the other direction on the same plane here tau z y and on this face we have the shear stress tau x y here and similarly on the top face as well we have the shear stresses so as you can see um, it gets kind of convoluted here so many different um, stress components we have the normal stress components on each of the faces as well as the shear stresses. Now one thing I always like to think about is um, remembering for static equilibrium the sum of force along the x, y, and z direction are equal to zero as well as that there this element is not rotating about the center so therefore all the shear stresses have to cancel out as well as the normal stresses. So this is why we have all these multiple components that make up the general state of stresses along each of the faces of this element. So now in engineering what we normally do is we always simplify the problems we have such that we simplify the amount of stress components that we're going to be dealing with and usually it's going to be in two dimensions not three. So looking at it from a 2D perspective let me go ahead and draw it out. So now looking at the same element but from a 2D perspective we see we have the coordinate the y-axis and the x-axis so we have all the normal stresses we have the normal stress along the x direction on either side as well along the y direction as well. and we have the shear stresses note the shear stress is perpendicular to the x-axis in the direction of y so this is tau xy and this one is tau perpendicular to the y-axis in the direction of the x so this is tau yx and on the opposite end it's equal and opposite remember keeping in mind um, I always look at it from the static equilibrium perspective all the forces along the x and y direction have to cancel out and in this cases the shear stresses have to be equal and opposite 
um, on either side of the face to cancel out. But additionally, for this 2D element here, there's also going to be no rotation in this element. That means for the 2D, the shear stress along the XY plane is equivalent to the shear stress along the Y X plane. So this is why in multiple cases, you may just find that they're only denoting either X or Y and they're not um, using the other variable because they're equivalent in this case. Since th this element is not rotating, um, the shear stresses are equal and opposite. And all the moments also cancel out. That means they're all equivalent. So now finally, this is where I could explain to you what is plane stress transformation. So now once we have this 2D element of an object that is experiencing some type of external loading, because at the end of the day, we're trying to have some practical applications for this in such as the case you have an object in stress, you're trying to make sure it's not failing and so forth. And so this element, you could actually rotate the axis instead of using the X Y plane, you could actually rotate it by some angle theta. Essentially what you're doing is you're rotating this element. So it's still going to be a square, right? But you're just rotating theta degrees at a certain angle. And what you're going to be doing is projecting these normal stresses along the X and Y direction into the new plane. Let's call this plane X prime and y prime and what you're doing is just projecting all the shear stresses as well as the normal stresses onto this plane and so let me go ahead and redraw it with this element oriented theta by theta degrees and so here is this same element here rotated by angle theta and so here are our new axes we have x bar as well as y bar now for specifically the sign conventions when we have a normal stress pointing in the positive x prime direction then we have this sigma x prime being positive so this is going to be our new naming convention where you're where we're denoting the variables sigma x prime, sigma y prime, as well as tau x y prime, um, and so forth. So this would be the normal stress in the positive x prime direction. And when it comes to the shear stress, when it's pointing in the positive y prime direction, the shear stress would be prime. So this is the tau x prime, y prime. And this, when it's going pointed towards a positive y prime direction, the shear stress is positive. So let me go ahead and draw all the stress components again. So now drawing all the other components, another way to look at it is if this element is in tension, then this normal stress is going to be positive as well as in the y prime direction if it's in tension as well is going to be positive. However, if it's in compression, then that's when the values would in fact be negative. That's another way of looking at it. And since we know the shear stresses along all these sides of this element are equivalent to tau x prime y prime, I just left it as is here. And so now this is where we do the plane stress transformation from the original x y axis to now the new x prime y prime axis and there are actually equations for them to be able to project the stresses onto this new rotated element which i will not derive but here are the equations that you're going to be utilizing so these are all the equations that you're going to be using for the plane stress transformation as you can see these equations are composed of the original um normal stress along the x and y direction as well as the shear stress along the x y plane so we have sigma x prime is equivalent to the sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 cosine 2 theta plus tau x y sine 2 theta and similarly the sigma y prime is equivalent but the only differences are the negative signs here you're subtracting instead of addition and we have tau x prime y prime is equal to negative sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 sine 2 theta plus tau x y cosine 2 theta. And these are the equations for the stress transformations.
Now, why exactly is all this important to have to rotate an element of an object and analyze the um, stresses um, of it being rotated about, right? The actual, the actual stresses developed along the normal X and Y direction still exist, but we're just projecting it onto this new axis. Well, there are cases where you rotate it a certain amount and the stresses may exceed the normal act and the normal stresses along the y x and y direction similarly the same thing occurs for the shear stresses there is an angle in which they the shear stresses is maximum there is an angle in which the normal stresses are maximum on that element and they should be considered for the design of the object to be able to withstand these stresses and so it's very it's a very important concept to learn and understand why we're using it ultimately for the design and to ensure the object does not fail under certain loading conditions so let's go ahead and do an example to better clarify the importance of this so for this problem statement we have the grains of wood in the board make an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal as shown Determine the normal and shear stress that act perpendicular and parallel to the grains if the board is subjected to an axial load of 250 newtons. So this is where we have a very practical application of the plane stress transformations. We have this object here made up of wood and we have these grains of wood at a 20 degree angle here. And so we have the external load of 250 newtons being applied to this. And the thickness of this wood is 25 millimeters. So of course, if we were to go ahead and compute the normal stress of this rod, it would be 166.7 kilopascals. And this originally, right, you could use it for, to design the dimensions of this wood or determine if this will fail. However, since this is wood and we do have grains at an angle of 20 degrees, usually wood tends to fail along the grains. So this is where it's a perfect application where you do, where you observe a uh, element somewhere in this object and then you rotate it along the same direction of the grains to be able to compute now your new um, normal stresses and your shear stresses along the new X prime, Y prime axis. So let me go ahead and draw out this element over here. So here's the element taken from this object here. Zooming in, we have that normal stress sigma x here, which we previously calculated, and we have it on the opposite end as well for static equilibrium. In this particular instance, um, in this orientation, we do not have any shear stresses developed. Now let's go ahead and rotate it such that this, the edge of the element, will align to the wood grain right in this case the wood grain is 20 degrees from the horizontal here so in other words we're going to be rotating it seven deg 70 degrees so here is now the new rotated element with our x prime axis as well as our y prime axis and we could see that we rotated it 70 degrees to align with the wood grain so this is the value for theta here and now we're going to be solving for the normal stresses right the x prime as well as the shear stresses right tau x prime y prime and so you see first off when you go to the original orientation of the element we only have a normal stress and no shear stresses however when you tend to rotate it we actually do end up having a value for the shear stresses and this could in fact be a situation where it will in fact fail along the grains and this is why it's very important to also check the stresses when on the element and do the plane stress plane stress transformations to make sure you're designing it accordingly such that the object won't fail. So now this is where we're going to be using the equations previously shown, right? We we know from the original rotation we have no normal stresses along the y direction. So sigma y is equal to zero as well as tau x y is also equal to zero. So keep this in mind when you're um, calculating the new normal and shear stresses of this orientation of the element that we're doing.
And now after plugging in all the values into our equations, here are normal and shear stresses acting on the element along the grains of the wood. And so this is something very careful to keep look at, keep a lookout for because if you're just analyzing the normal stresses on the beam or this wooden rod here, you may believe it won't fail. However, once you calculate it with the element doing an element orientation at a certain angle, in this case along the grains, it may actually be the case where it'll fail along the grain. So that's something always to, to keep a lookout for. And we see that we have the normal stresses, the X prime, Y prime being developed, as well as a shear stress actually being a negative value. So that means it's just going to be oriented downwards here, the opposite of how we drew it. But yes, this is a very important concept to understand and it has very practical applications. So the more you practice, the easier it gets. Let's go back and look at the this object here. Now, if for whatever reason this was experiencing bending, then you would go ahead and choose the element where you would have the maximum moment and also calculate the bending stresses and so forth. And then you would go ahead and see at what angle would we have the maximum normal and shear stresses and to determine if it will fail at that particular area. So that's a, another practical application, right? You're not just choosing a random element within the object itself, but sometimes it may be a specific location where you want to look at where you'll know you'll have the maximum stresses developed and then look at that element itself at that location and then see at what orientation will we find maximum shear and normal stresses and make sure the object won't fail.